<laughs> First of all, is this, as they say in some movies, based on a true story? It, it definitely has a, a lot of seeds based on true life. Uh, I played a role in relation to the bread factory, the real-life bread factory like Janine Garofalo. I was uh, a director who was invited uh, to come show my film. And, uh, and it's a place that you know, shows uh, opera and films and theater and run by these two women who are facing some of the same issues in their town. Um, but I, I sort of like to uh, you know, accept these little seeds of, of truth and then kind of uh, veer off into fiction after that. I see. And in terms of um, your scripts, uh, were, the, were these, apart from the uh, from Hecuba, is, is everything written by you, like the poems in the first part, are those written by you? Yeah. Yeah. Everything except Hecuba. Yeah. And um, so you did you allow for any um, contributions or improvisations by the actors? The the contributions from the the improvisations from the actors were generally not in the text. You know, they would uh, they were nonverbal. They would do something different. Yeah. Uh, that that didn't have to do with text. With one exception, there was one beautiful exception, which was uh, during part one, uh, Troop's monologue, when he calls for line. Yes. Uh, that happened on set, and uh, at first I was furious. <laughs> because it was it was the best take and and uh, I'm like oh and you know I, and I don't want to cut in that so I'm like oh I can't use that but then uh, I calmed down and uh, and I talked to the actor and we kind of had the same idea you know that we would uh, we would actually use that and, and so we kind of redesigned the later scenes to, to have that make sense. Well, regarding you know there because there's there's several lengthy monologues. Uh, the um, Sir Walter, when you know, like the first long monologue seems to be from Uncle Vanya. Is that right, or is it, or is it based on ideas from? I mean, elements from Uncle Vanya. I mean, what is it exactly? Yeah, you're talking about Tessa's monologue. Oh yeah, sorry, Tessa. When she's when she's uh, performing. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I'm getting the two things confused. That's right. right. Yeah. So the first one she performs is sort of my. I, I wrote that years ago. It was my spoof of Chekhov. So it's I see. A, it's a pastiche of all of these different. Um, Chekhov, and, and part of what makes me laugh sometimes about uh, Chekhov performance style. Um, and then when you get to Sir Walter, he also has a long monologue. Yes, about Tanya. Yes, that is also uh, from, from a different Russian, sort of Chekhov's uh, protege, uh, Ivan Bunin. Um, not in the theater, but in literature. Oh, right. So and this is something you wrote based on yes. it? Yeah. It was sort of... But a parody of that? The or? first one was a parody, and then the second one, I tried to be a little more earnest. Yeah. You know, but for one detail, <laughs> um, you might think it's completely earnest. Um, yeah, and I, I, I probably connect more with Bunyan than I do with Chekhov. <laughs> I understand. Uh, now, about May Ray, what do they signify for you? <laughs> Um, you know, there there is a lot of contemporary art, performance art that I find kind of funny. Yeah. Um, I Do you mean that's not supposed to be funny? Maybe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and but you know, I I think that they almost come up as I think a dangerous kind of false choice. Um, that you know we have to choose between art A and art B. Yeah. And that and that one is you know somehow more meaningful, and the other is um, this thing that should be eradicated. And I, I think there's always been popular art. There's always been thin art. Yeah. Um, and I think that what they represent in this film is very much linked to the fact that they're turbocharged by capital. Um, well, that, that brings up the fact, which is fascinating to me, that you, um, I think when you went to MIT, you majored in economics. That's right. And minored, I think, in drama. Is that right? Or Right. And uh, the... Degree there was uh, music and theater arts. Yeah. Okay. Well, it seems like that there's very you know that economics are very relevant. I mean, uh, to both parts of uh, Bread Factory because it's it's you know it's about the grant getting the grant in the first part and then it's about real estate partly in the second part, mm -hmm. uh, which comes to the same you know like some of the same kind of result. Uh, 
I don't know. Do you feel that uh, economics are part of your uh, view of what's go of, of what's happening in a bread factory? I mean, is it, or is it? Yeah, it, it definitely is. I think that, you know, I started as a physics major at oh. MIT, and. Uh, and, you know, I was very surprised how messy physics was. I had this very naive view that physics was this clean, um, godlike thing. And uh, it was so messy, and I thought, well, if it's going to be this messy, I might as well study economics. And that actually has something to do with people's lives. And, you know, we, we look at forces and try to understand how people come to make the decisions they are and how they're shaped by these things outside of themselves. At the same time, they're trying to express some internal values. And I think that... There's, you know, you can look at that just in a family drama, you know, those kinds of sets of issues, or you can extend them to a society. And like you said, to communicate between segments of society, money comes up. Yeah. And, um, and to express systems of power, money comes up. And so, yeah, it is a little more ex uh, expressly uh, economics based, but I think it's a continuum of the same kinds of forces. Well, another thing that comes to mind, I mean, at least in what I see as a kind of like a difference between part one and part two, is that, I mean, I spoke earlier in my introduction about it all being about um, interactivity. Mm -hmm. But at this, in a certain kind of way, what happens in the second part is much more, for me, and very often about loneliness and about people being an isolated and being blocked in various ways. I, I mean, uh, and even the fact that the, that you often film the you know in the production of Hecuba, you film a lot of the actors from behind mm -hmm. instead of in front. It's about so in an, in a certain kind of way. It's about roadblocks to interactivity. A large part of the second part, it seems to me. Yeah, I I think the second part to me is much more an expression of contemporary life um, in all its confusion. And I think a big part of that is in isolation. I think that, you know, when, when I discovered this, you know, this little device of having the tourists who come in and yes. the tech workers, um, you know, singing and dancing, it was nice because that's still an expressive device. You know, you, you don't lose track of the, you know, you could easily start to uh, see them as evil, malignant forces, but there's still people trying to communicate. It's just a form of communication that doesn't allow for a conversation. Well, it's the same thing with the people with the in the restaurant with their with their mobiles. I mean, uh, because they're they they might be communicating on their mobiles, but the, most of the people around them in the restaurant don't seem to be aware of what they're doing. So, yeah. so it seems like that there's a kind of uh, the connections that they're there are invisible. Yeah, and I and I think that that's a great thing to bring up. It is part of this big theme of not just communication, but connection. And I think a big part of uh, contemporary living is we have connections available. It's just we move right past them because of these particular tools we have of, uh, of, of expressing ourselves. Well, one thing that I was uh, mentioning to you before, before the films today was that um, that's fascinating to me is that Patrick was comes from a big city, Houston, mm -hmm. and uh, he lives in a big, a big, even bigger city, New York, but he he's filmed all of his, all three of, uh, of his films outside of New York City, and I think what's kind of interesting about that is that I see May Ray as having a lot to do with big cities and celebrity culture, and uh, and in a sense, this film is a kind of statement in opposition to all of that. Uh, in the same way that it's, you know, there's like a difference between New York and America, there's a difference between Hollywood and America, which I think one of the great things about Chicago is that Chicago is America. <laughs> it's not uh, an alternative to America, the way that New York and Hollywood are, in a certain way. And anyway, I'd like you, I'd, like, I'd, be, I'd be interested in hearing your own thoughts about this. Yeah, I... Um... I think there's something that my thoughts clear. I mean, first of all, I just I have a connection to smaller towns. Um, I I once lived in a small town in Argentina, and that was a very as a as an exchange student that was a very formative experience. What, what part of Argentina? It was in the northeast in Corrientes. It's a oh. small town called Goja. 
and uh, and and as I traveled, you know, to one of the great things about making a movie is you get to see a lot of cities you wouldn't otherwise see, and you know, towns in the Midwest um, as well as small towns, uh, I. I felt very much at home, Matt. I'm not, I'm not sure what that means, but it's... Uh... Well, I'm, I come from a small town in Alabama, like uh, Bay, I guess, so... Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, no, that's partly what, one of the things I can recognize and bond with in this film about the kind of uh, connections you have with people that even that you're not connected with in a small town. I mean, it's like... Uh, the way you could, you know, the way lives kind of crisscross, which can happen to some extent in big cities, but not nearly as much, I think. I think also in, uh, in dramatic literature, a small town is often the setting, uh, because you can show everything going on in that town. So like yeah. Ibsen's An Enemy of the People, um, Brecht, you know, you have all, you see this, it's small enough that you can see all the forces at play. Um, 